I talked to the troops, and I said, we have a decision to make. We can stay right here and try to hold until we get reinforcements, or we can try to make it to the top of the mountain, which would be better terrain for us to defend ourselves. The decision is mine to make, and I decided we were going to try to get to the top of the mountain. The enemy was pursuing us, and we finally got to the top. We decided that was going to be our last stand, and I kept radioing back and said, okay, now I'm at the top of the mountain, and they're coming, and I, I'm low on ammo, and it, this, this is not looking good to me. So we laid down, and we took our magazines, and we stacked them. And we said, okay, bring it. And then I heard it before I ever saw it, that beautiful sound of a helicopter. It's Apaches, you know, still makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up, flew over us, you know, and fired those missiles into those enemy troops that had been pursuing us and took care of that. And as we're pulling away, I thought to myself, I've just spent a lifetime on that mountain. I left three men on that mountain. And actually, I left part of myself on that mountain. I went to the pilot, and I said to him, thank you for saving us. And he goes, Sergeant Major, we were listening to you all morning on the radio. We were not going to leave you on that mountain. And I just said, thank you. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. I really do. And he goes, that's my job. That's what I do. Gretchen Evans' courage and leadership was tested that day in Afghanistan. And yet, there would be many more difficult days ahead. Six months after that mission, she found herself in harm's way again. As she commanded her troops to take cover, a mortar blast threw her against a bunker head first. She'd survive, but be placed in a medically induced coma. On the day that they decided to wake me up, a young army doctor was standing right next to my bed. We had a dry erase board, and he was writing on it with a marker. And he waved to me like this to get my attention. And he flipped it over, and he wrote the words, you're deaf. And so I took the board from him and I wiped it off with my hand. I wrote the word forever and showed it to him and he nodded his head. Her 27 year military career, spanning her entire adult life, was over. Diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury and severe PTSD along with her deafness, her re entry into the civilian world became an all too familiar veteran's tale. And all of a sudden, I had to shift into a world that I didn't understand and had it not been a part of. I felt worthless because I didn't think I could contribute anything to life anymore. And I wanted to die. The way I was dealing with the grief was I ran and I ran and I ran to obsession. I was running 12, 13, 14 miles a day. I wasn't eating. I was trying to disappear. One day out on the road, Gretchen was struck and nearly killed by a cyclist she couldn't hear coming. He threw me into traffic. I still remember smelling that burned rubber. One of my doctors looked me right in the face and he said to me, Gretchen, you can't do the things you used to do anymore. You've changed. And I felt like there was this door was closing. And if I didn't stick my foot in this closing door, I was going to lose my life. And I thought, no, I want my life back. On the brink of giving up hope, Gretchen reached out to an organization called America's Vet Dogs, a group that provides service dogs to veterans living with disabilities. I wrote an email to them and said, I have a traumatic brain injury, I'm deaf, I have severe PTSD, can you help me? And I hit send. An email pops up. There was one word on that email, yes. I never
never held my hand up and asked for something free. I don't need you to lower the bar for me. I got the coolest set of ears you could ever imagine. All throughout her recovery, Gretchen relied closely on a support system she thought of as a rope team, a military reference dictating that if one member of a group falls down, the others tied together pick them back up to continue on their journey, all together. As you go through the highs and the lows of your life, everybody should have a rope team. You almost can't survive without one. So with the help of new friends and old, Gretchen began her road back. She found a number of veterans organizations and soon began doing what she'd always done best, lead. I felt like a sergeant major all over again. I was just didn't wear the same uniform. I wore this, but I was still helping people be successful in their life. In the years since, Gretchen has become a face of the veterans advocacy movement. She repurposed her passion, running, competing in more than 30 marathons and forming Team Unbroken a group of veteran and civilian athletes with disabilities who take part in adventure races all over the world. It's a minute who we are as a team and that we're not quitters. Yes! They've raised tens of thousands of dollars for veterans organizations and have tied themselves together as a new rope team. Wounded, perhaps, but very much unbroken. Bye, guys. Do hard things. Learn what grit can do for you, because it's a feeling deep down inside of here. When you think you've taken your last step, that you still can take 10 more. And once you do that, it can propel you so far. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.